Hey guys, welcome to our second Seconds. webcast. This is Jet Built. We're here in Newport Beach, California. I'm here with Paul Dexter, founder of Jet Built, and I'm Paul Bresenden. I am Jet Built's chief marketing officer. And yes, thank you. Thanks for joining us again. The response last time was 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 really great. And well, I stole your thunder. You were introducing no, us. Go, ahead, go back to it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're this uh, this is our second webcast. Second obviously, webcast. So we we're started sophomores. last. Um, last month we t started talking through the sales process overwhelmingly the response that we heard back from you guys was to start would love to have more conversation around this idea of designing for free mm -hmm. and how to step away from the process of clients um, basically spending a ton of time putting together design just to even put together a proposal right and I know this is a big deal in the agency world, in the design world. I've walked with that for a, over a decade. Right. How big of a problem is this in the, the AV integrator world? Yeah, well, I, I wouldn't say it's worse, but it definitely is as bad as any other industry. Because for whatever reason, out, when you go into general construction, every client understands a contractor is not going to give them a price on their house or building or stadium without a set of plans. And, and it's not the con construction company's job to give them that unless that's part of their, their, their services they offer and they're going to get paid for that because everybody knows there's weeks and weeks and months and months of design work to make a set of plans to, to build a building. Every single, there, there's hundreds of sheets. And, and we know as AV integrators that there's uh, not that far fewer sheets in a, in a high-end AV system. Uh, you know, a typical, even a home system can have 20, 30 sheets, but a, a commercial system for maybe a, you know, a large church or a, or a, or a, a, a performing, performing arts center, uh, get my thoughts together here, they can be 100 sheets deep for, for audio video systems. And, and yet we're being asked by, by uh, the, the end user, yeah, give me a price on my system. You know, I've got, maybe they'll give you a budget range. We talked about this last week or last month, but, uh, uh, but give me a price on the system. Where's your hundred sheets of drawings for me to know what you want? And so I'm happy to give that to you. It's going to cost a little bit of money. And that's a huge problem in the AV industry. Now, keep in mind, I'm sorry to uh, finish my thought and then take it back over, but, but let's keep in mind, uh, 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 the large systems, the stadiums, the, the large performing arts centers, a lot of you know all corporate uh, work, a lot of that is designed by an audio video consultant designer who's being paid, you know, brought in by the, the architect or the builder uh, of the project to do a set of designs. They work with the end user, the, the, the client, and the architect to put a good set of designs together. That does happen in the industry. It just happens a fraction of the time, a minority of the time. So, so that, you know, most of the smaller home projects, most of the smaller commercial projects, a lot of churches, uh, you know, bars and grills, restaurants, the vast majority of, of everything, you know, in the smaller category, because clearly large projects, there's a minority of large projects and there's a big majority of smaller projects and uh, on up to half a million dollar projects. My, my firm did a lot of very large projects for us that, that uh, almost none of them were designed professionally before. Uh, we bid on some of those too, but when clients would come to us with something of even a two, three, four hundred thousand dollar uh, budget, they're asking us to design build and, and they want that design for free. Sure, I see. Yeah. So, and, I, and I'm sure this has never happened to any of you. And I'm sure it's never happened to you right. either. <laughs> right. Of a client coming, you, coming to you and asking, uh, whether it's through an RFP or an RFI mm -hmm. process, and they're saying, here's what our budget is, and let's, uh, we, we'd love to have a proposal for you. And then you're stuck with figuring out all of the details on their behalf. Right. right. Um, I'm not sure how much time that takes you, maybe a couple hours, maybe a couple days. Uh, and you walk through that process, and God forbid, you put the whole thing together, and then you don't hear back from them. Right. Or, uh, and I'm sure that's never happened. Never happened to you. Never. <laughs> Uh, or worse, they, they go through and they take your specifications and then they send those specifications out to a bunch of other vendors and right. say, hey, now quote me on this. And you right. feel like you've been violated or ripped sure. off in the yeah. process. And a lot of tech savvy end users will take your design and they'll reverse engineer it oh, and buy right. everything on, on Amazon or wherever they can, Guitar Center, uh, Home Depot or uh, uh, Best Buy. And, uh, 
and and then put it in themselves. And and sure, we all know the the results aren't going to be anywhere near as well as we would have done it. But it is possible. The more you give them, the more it can be reverse engineered. <laughs> Which uh, how how bad would that be? Now, yeah. now not only did you not get paid for it, but then they then they secretly see that right. they're like are mad at you because you right. didn't <laughs> your design failed when you didn't even get to the chance right. to do it. Exactly, yeah. And you know, that I would say there's one good thing about where technology is at today. That happens less now than it did. 15 years ago, I uh, because these systems are so much more complex to put together. Uh, you know, my firm, we would do a number of projects a year where we'll sell a design and equipment, and uh, especially in the house of worship market, there's a lot of volunteers that are all willing to pitch in, and they, can, they know how to hang speakers, they know how to run electrical, and so we would sell them design and equipment and some consulting, and they could put it in themselves. But but up in volunteers would do rigging. Well, yeah. Well, because there's, there's general contractors in oh the in love. Yeah, it's a little scary. But there's general contractors that you know that will pitch in and they know how to do it right uh, by and large. And uh, but today, as of about four or five years ago, when control systems became so embedded into the equipment, now you can't even really. Uh, uh, reverse engineer a lot of these projects because now when we're going to do something like that we have to then still send people out to program half of the equipment up anyway so i think that the technology is solving some of the reverse engineering of projects which is an interesting side note you know i i um i was sharing with you one of these stories of in i work in the the agency world uh, and we build uh, marketing solutions and websites and um they can range from you know thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars all the way up into the six figures. Yeah. Uh, we put together a similar. We had a similar process with one of our clients, and we walked through, scoped a solution, sat down with them, um, and they had been a client for ours for a couple of years. Um, but they, we'd been pushing them into this process for a really long time. They're finally willing to commit, and so we gave them a proposal, and they come back to us after a period of silence which we knew would happen right. uh, and they a couple weeks later and they basically said you know we took this process out to bid um, and we had got three other vendors because we figured that was what was due diligence on right. our part and uh, two of the bids were half of your price and one was double and so their, their question back to us was well are you really twice as good as those two other competitors or half as good as the other one how come there isn't any consistency in this yeah. industry and I would imagine that same type of response, even if it's unsaid, is very similar to yeah. what you guys are up against. The client themselves ha really doesn't have any ability to evaluate the technical right. aspects of the proposal. Right. And so the things that they understand, the things that they can grasp onto, whether that's the equipment list or the... Um, Maybe maybe it's the coverage charts yeah. or the specifics of a manufacturer's you know equipment or whatever that is. They can go back and they say, hey, we want now uh, a stereo or a mono setup or a stereo yeah. setup, or we want these particular configurations in our lobby, or we want this type of uh, screens or whatever else that's in there. And now they take the pieces that they do understand and they've thrown that out into the process. Right. Maybe they don't even give you the courtesy of coming back to justify or right. to explain your process. Um, and I, tell me a little bit more about what some of these, what, maybe some yeah. of the users are facing, what you have faced in the process. Give me some horror stories that you've right. kind of walked into. Yeah, because just like your example, that, that, that's super, super common. Uh, and it's common in residential, it's common in commercial. Uh, one of my early clients was uh, was a, a restaurant chain, a, a real high level restaurant chain <clears throat> that uh, that valued spending uh, a, a good amount of money on their audio video system. So they would spend forty thousand dollars on a restaurant, which is you know a lot more than Denny's is going to put in for you know for uh, speakers, um, and and uh, um, and so that's a good budget for for a little restaurant. And of course they've got. Uh, you know, 50, 60 restaurants, and we're excited to to uh, to, to get all of them. And so uh, I I spent, and I was I was new at integrating at the time. I mean, I had a, obviously a rich tradition of, of audio video expertise, but but my, I just started my integrating company, and uh, and so I um, you know I spent a lot of time. I was hungry without sounding desperate, and they had come to me because they they knew of my background in in, uh, in uh, the studio, recording studios, and designing studios as well as engineering and studios. And so they'd come to me, so I was willing to engage them. And uh, uh, but I I uh, I spent a lot of time, 
designing up uh, just the right system for this, uh, the, the first of these series of restaurants I was to do. And, uh, and so it came out $35,000 because they had told me they spend those types of money. So I knew a, a ballpark to land in to, to be at a sweet spot for them. And uh, so then they showed me uh, some, some competitive bids. They were friendly enough to me to, to do that. And I, I actually don't like it when people show me those bids because I know they're showing my bid to them as well. And that's, that's a place that none of us really want to be. But at the time, I was excited to see those so I could see where I fit into the rest. And yeah, there were some that were $12,000. And there was there was one that was 65 or something in that neighborhood. So almost exactly like your, your story. I was twice as much. I was half as much. And they're coming back to me saying, well, then why? Are, 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 you, are you twice as good? Are you half as good? And I'm saying that's because you're judging apples to oranges to pears and bananas. And, uh, and, and, and it's just not the same thing. You, you need to be paying for a design and you want to get... And this restaurant chain, by the way, was all about design. They have their own architectural company inside the, the company because they're so into design. And they have an art buyer that, that travels the world buying pieces of art they put in their restaurants. And then she travels the restaurants, moving them around. So everywhere you're at in the, in the U.S. of these restaurants, the art is changing and shifting. They put so much value to their, to their architectural design and their, and their um, uh, uh, art inside and, their, and, and everything else about the restaurant. But audio video, they're like, let's get a bunch of quotes, you know, and see what, see what happens. So at that was, and that was for me about 15 years ago, I said, there has to be a better way. And there is a better way. There's been the consultant industry and design firms have been around for years, but they're considered to be for the elite projects. And they kind of price themselves to be for the elite projects. So when a restaurant has $35,000 to spend, even if it is times 50 restaurants, they don't, they can't just know to go to someone like that. Ultimately, they wound up trusting me and, and I, I did a few little demos and I, I gave, you know, I, I essentially added the value that needed that, for them to believe in my solution. And then we went on to do a lot of those restaurants. Um, but that was by happen by happenstance. So, or so you you bid for you per, did the design for free and ended up right. doing the job. Give me give me the other side. So the other give me side. side where you did a lot of sure. work. And ended up. Yeah. So so uh, there's um, uh, there are let's see I think of another example. I came in with a lot of examples, but not one where I did all this work and didn't. I did I gave examples of where I well, kept myself from doing the work. It's, uh, the, the sad truth yeah. is, is that even in, just like baseball, none of us bats a thousand. Sure. And, well, and most companies that come to us that we walk into a relationship with, I hear this all the time, oh, we close 80% of everything comes yeah. our way. And yeah. then we actually put, we actually start mapping it out and put the numbers to it. And it's yeah. nowhere near true. Right. You want so to believe it. You, you, you want, want to believe it. it. Yeah. You absolutely well, let me, do. Let me and give you this. That's what feeds this problem. Sure. We sure. want to believe that if I invest all of this time and effort yeah. and I put together the perfect solution that the client is going to recognize it and fall yeah. to their knees in glory right. and then write a check. Yeah, And sure. that's, that's not, most of the time, the client coming back to us saying, you know, how do I even evaluate this reveals right. the problem. They are not technical enough to understand no. what we're even talking about. Right. And so they're coming to us saying, we need a solution. But then there's this trust factor. Do I trust this person to yeah. solve this problem? So they go out and get three or four other quotes, but now they're left with a stack of papers, a stack yeah. of designs, and no objective way to evaluate those. Right, right. So we yeah. have to come back to them and say, do you trust us to solve your problem? Yeah, see, and that gets into this world, although I wanted to answer your other question real quick, but let me say this. Um, I believe there's these three points that, it, that a client is going to choose a vendor by. One is price. Obviously, price is a component. So someone that's, that's, that's maybe not half the price because that looks suspect maybe, but 30% less, 20% less, they go, yeah, I'm attracted to that price. So price is a big factor. Um, trust has to be the next big factor. I, I like that to be more important than price, of course, because if you really trust someone through that consultation and this sales process, you're going to believe, even if they're a little more or a little less, if, if they're a little less, and, and you question the design, you, you trust them to make it right in the end. We talked about that uh, this morning. If you trust, uh, or if, if they're overpriced, you're, you're trusting, you know, I'm gonna trust you with a little extra money because I, I trust you. So trust and price are two big uh, fa uh, factors, but design almost winds up not being a big factor because they don't understand it. You're dealing with someone who runs a restaurant or a hotel or a theme park, they don't understand the, the you know our technologies that we use and so 
uh, and especially homeowners and residential or like churches where they do a project every 20 years and they don't do it day to day. Yes, a theme park puts in systems every day. They get it. They understand more technology. They've got staff that understands it maybe better than I do. But but a lot of our clients don't understand it at all. So they really have to rely on price and trust. So I use that backwards into, uh, into let's say I'm going to buy a car. If I'm going to pick a BMW, it's not going to be because of price or trusting the dealership. You know, most of us don't trust dealerships or car salespeople at all. That's, so there's zero value on the trust factor. And price, BMWs maybe are going to be higher. So I'm not going to buy it on, on, on price. I'm going to buy it on product, right? The design and the product. Uh, now, of course, I don't get to understand. They're not giving me the, 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 the blueprints for the car. But I'm buying it based on product. And I'm not buying it on price or trust. And so that's something that I wish we could get more in our industry. If they would, if they would pay us now, true, I don't have to pay BMW for design. But, but you are paying a premium for BMW. But I'm paying for it in the product. The, sure. the, the challenge with that is we're commoditizing what we're doing. Right. And that, and that becomes a little bit difficult. Sure. So if we begin viewing these as just a bunch of parts, yeah. then, then it's true. They can just take what we've spec'd and pull it apart. Right. Uh, but the reality is, is that you can take a pile of equipment and you can set them up and it's going to sound drastically better than if someone who doesn't know what they're doing. Sure, with the same all parts. Of those same, with the same right. parts. Right, right. And so what we're, what we're, the fear in this scenario is that we're putting together the nuts and bolts, but not actually putting together a system that solves the problem. Yeah. And so let's let's before we. Kind of well, let me answer your question real quick to the yes before, and it's not my example. It's an example of, of one of you guys uh, wrote this in, uh, said, we've struggled with this topic for years. And this is a, a company in New York that's not a small little operator. They're, they're a larger company that struggled with this topic for years, other than when they're bidding on pre, pre, you know, projects that are in the bid process with full sets of designs. When they're approached by an end user, they struggle with, with being paid for the design. They say any attempt we have ever made to charge for design has failed because there's always someone willing to do it for free. Uh, you know, then they, they said, and I like this, you know, we as a collective group of AV integrators need to join together and say no to free design, get everybody on board. And I love that, that sentiment. I wish it could happen and maybe it can eventually. Maybe, sure. maybe with more and more webcasts like this and more and more of us saying, you know what? No, let's put a line in the sand. Uh, if you're not going to pay me, at least pay someone to do the design because only then can, are you going to value the design the way I value the BMW in my example. And, and, and now the user is paying for a design that's, that's really good. Um, now, true, how are they going to know one design over the other? And that opens up a whole can of worms for another webcast. But the point is, it, it's, it's like you were just getting to, it's being valued for, for our expertise. So, so if, you're will, if a client is willing to have 10 people do their own design and give you a price, clearly we know we're not being valued. We're just another number to throw in the pot so a board can make a decision, right? And none of us like feeling like that, but we're all in business and we've got to close jobs. And so we have to do a certain number of that. It comes down to how, how, how busy or slow are we, frankly, you know, and I'll, and I'll give some of those examples later on. I'll get into a couple of things that have really worked for me in my last few years running my integration company before JetBuilt that really started to work, you know, and it did require a hard line in the sand. And, uh, other than there's times where there'd be passion projects, I'd be willing to go down a road more. And we can talk about some of that. But So it feels, even the beginning muddiness of this conversation, I, I'm sure that there are plenty of people that are stuck in this frustrating process like they were describing that company in New York. Right. We've, we try this. It has not worked for us. It's right. really frustrating. Um, and it is, in many regards, um, walking into any kind of sales engagement is like walking into a relationship. Right. The, the money part is one of the hardest things to jump into. Yeah. And because we're not willing to face a lot of these issues head on, we ended up spinning up our wheels and doing a lot of free work. Yeah. The reality is in any kind of relationship like this, you're going to do some element of free work. Right. You're going to take the phone call from them. Right. You're going to figure out what their particular problem is to figure out if it's a good fit for you or not. Right. Um, but then what happens is we get really excited and maybe it's because we're slow or maybe it's because it's a really exciting client and there's huge upside potential. Yeah. But we skip the right steps in the sales process to pre-qualifying them. Yeah. yeah. And so because of that, I guess the main part of this conversation, hopefully that we, that we leave you with, is how do we arrive at great clients 
great relationships, good sales, mm -hmm. and minimize free work in the process. Right. So that's what this conversation about. This could end up being the design, being the major part of this. Right. This could end up being some of the things that you may be doing in terms of giving away free work is spending hours and hours and hours going over the meeting and talking to them about what they need. Right. It could end up being the, the you're so overzealous in your proposal process that you end up spending 20 hours putting together this killer proposal. Right. And if that's not affected by how you're measuring your kill rate, the number of proposals that are actually closing, yeah. the amount of time that you spent in that sales process, all of that is free work that you may or may not be wasting based yeah. upon how that relationship goes. Right. So you've, got, you've shared a couple of great examples with me on how you've done some free work for clients right. and they've actually turned into great, amazing clients. Right. And I think all of us in the back of our heads have those. Right. Those are the things that we hold on to that says, no, this is worth it. This is worth doing. Yeah. So, yeah. Having that hard line in the sand, I would not have some of my best clients. Like that restaurant example I said, and, and about three or four of my core clients that went on to do just millions of dollars worth of work. And, uh, and I did free design work for them. So you can't say the best clients long terms are the ones that value you early on and get paid, you know, pay you for design because it may be, it may be sometimes it's not like that. But, and also when you're young and growing your company from nothing, you're more willing to do those things and you need to. That's, that's, the, way, that's the way it goes. Or this company that's mature and it's right. pretty large size. And, and they're, they're still, still struggling doing. with that. So here's, here's the way that I would frame this, this problem. Yeah. It's, there's a number of factors involved in landing a client. Right. Uh, and how much work you put out there for free depends upon largely you. Yeah. So how much are you willing to invest in this relationship is a fundamental question you should ask every time. Yeah. So if your investment involves a lot of time of doing free design work, great. Yeah. If this client represents a new industry vertical that you don't have expertise in, would really look good on your portfolio, yeah. great. Right. If this client is a big, huge you know, cornerstone in the industry right. and you're willing to do that because now you have a client logo to add that's right. really recognizable, you may want to do the work for free. Right. Who knows? Yeah. Right. There, there's plenty of considerations to do that, sure. but to do them blindly or to feel that you're captive in the process ends up being a really tough position to be in. Yeah. yeah. Um, let's let's kind of walk through some of the solutions that are happening in the industry that yeah. maybe some of, of JetBuilt users are doing. Some right. of the examples that you have or I have. Let's kind of let's kind of come up on a happy note of what are some ways we can minimize free work and help accelerate those processes. Because you don't have to make a firm policy that says we're never doing proposals, right. for f we're never doing design for free, yeah. or we're never putting out proposals unless they paid us for whatever. Right. So right. let's let's talk through some of the ways that we've done. Yeah. That people have done that. Yeah. Right. Well, I'll start with some jet built users, and then I'll I'll end with a, a kind of what really worked for me uh, as well. Um, we have a, a, a company in uh, San Diego that that um, that we talked to. That said, there's a jet built user that that uh, said they've adapted their design retainer uh, contract, which uh, which they use a number of ways. And again, I think it's the number of ways that's kind of key, okay. because just like you said, you may want to throw the whole thing out the window if it's you know if it's uh, uh, you know the new Mercedes Benz football stadium and and then again you're looking at a month of free work you know uh, so maybe maybe not. <laughs> I but, wouldn't do that. Yeah, but the point the point being is is. Uh, you still for that. right, right. You still do it a, a number of ways, and, and it's kind of incremental. And so, number one, the price can change. You know, you, you can charge very little just to, a, a way to give a client some amount of pain, uh, or not pain, but but some amount of, of skin in the game and buying and 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 showing good faith. You know, uh, so the numbers can go up or down, but use this basic uh, design uh, retainer, and in this. Uh, this company's uh, uh, spin on it was was there's a, there's a design retainer fee uh, that's a certain amount of money, and then there's a design itself fee that's a certain amount of money, and they could go into a, a project and if they're working directly with a the client, they'd say, well, here's the design uh, the process that we go through in order to give you a, a job. They give all the analogies that we all give. You can't have a, a builder give you a price on a home without an architect first. You have to have the design done. You have to know the design. Then you can have anybody bid on it, me, and you can have other people bid on it if you like, but let's pin this design down. They give them that, so that the, whole thing. Let me make sure I'm understanding. There's sure. a retainer fee that allows them to get enough information to scope the work. And right. then they actually have a design fee that's after that that actually builds the design. So the retainer Correct. fee is big picture, 
Big yeah. picture opens up the project, gets them as a client, and now here you here I am. I'm your client. I understand some of your pains. Now uh, this next thing would be here's the design uh, fee. So they're they're twice as good as most of yeah, yeah most of exactly. the people that we've talked to. Yeah, which is similar to is similar, but but a little different to my concept uh, uh, that I'll get into later that I adapted. But but I like this. But what's interesting about it is they could do it directly with the, the consumer, their client. Or they would also do it when working with a builder. And this was a unique approach. If a builder brought them in, builder, um, you know, so that the contractor building the home or the, or the, or the building, uh, when the builder brings them in, they can then go to the client and say, okay, uh, here's how we have to approach this. There's a design retainer, but the builder is taking care of that for you. Oh, now nice. we just have the design portion. Okay. So there, it makes the builder look really good, but it also feels that makes the homeowner or, or a client feel like, okay, now I'm only having to pay half the price or two, whatever the prices are. Yeah. But because some of it's already been paid, I can pay out the rest. So it was a, it was a, it was a tactic I really liked. Sure. Um, and, uh, and whether the builder even paid it or not doesn't matter. It's, it's the fact that this is something that really works for them that gets them these paid designs. And it, 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 yeah, so what you're doing is you're building value in the design process. Yeah, exactly. And, and unfortunately, most companies don't value that even in them, themselves. Right. They, they assume that that's the barrier to entry. Right. And if that's your barrier to entry, you feel like you have to give that away, you're essentially going to invest the least amount possible into that process to right. get the work that you do want to do or that is profitable. And I would I would flip this. In, in, the, in my industries, mm -hmm. so in the agency world, um, most of the industry was structured around this idea of being able to scope a project before you actually do it. We've, we've kind of flipped that back on its head a little bit. And as you begin to move up market, you're able to do this. Mm -hmm. You're able to say, hey, we're going to start by road mapping your entire project. Because if we don't road map this project, you're going to probably come to the end and realize that you have 15 other things that you want to do yeah. that didn't get done here. And so we charge anywhere between 10 and 20% of the project just to roadmap it up front. Right. We'll credit that back to them. Yeah. Uh, as if they go with us to do the actual project, you credit that process back and you, you don't have to. Right. You can just pull right. that out to be standalone. The reality is, is that every client understands that they are going to have to compensate this vendor for their time in the end. Right. And what they're hoping to do is to learn enough about that vendor in that process mm -hmm. to say, do I trust this person enough to implement? Right. Or they maybe it's the solution that they want, and so they cheat the whole process and get as much free work out of you as possible to achieve right. their goal, but they're not, they're not being completely honest with you up front right. as well. And so that's, that's part of the way you change this. I know some agencies that are making seven figures a year just in road mapping, just mm. in the design mm. process. Yeah, see, proving the value there, number one, you know, and, 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 and proving that, that uh, and, and I really learned this as we evolved, that there could be, there could be, uh, I love doing design build, I love designing what we build in AV, but there's good value in the design, and it's not that it's this, this, this bummer portion that is, is the expense portion just to get to the building, it can be, not only is it fun to do, but it can be fruitful and that you can make good money doing that, yeah. um, even if you don't get those projects. You know? And you're going to find clients that value it and clients that you don't. And, right. and I guess um, maybe part of this process, so I love what he's saying, uh, the, the company in San Diego, yeah. of this way of pre-qualifying clients with right. a retainer fee. Right. So right. are they a good fit for us? Is the builder a good fit for us? Because yeah. both of those relationships have to be good. Right. Um, and money is just one of the ways that we pre-qualify. Yeah. So right. if they're not willing to step in and have an honest dialogue up front that they're that you're willing to step in and honestly do that, money right. has a way of clearing away a lot of those barriers. So if they're stringing you along or they're wanting to take your design and bid that out, yeah. uh, and maybe they're just being honest. They don't know how the process works. They don't value design. Yeah. You've got to educate and walk them through in the process. Right. So yeah. this is one of the ways that you can use to pre-qualify. It doesn't yeah. have to be the only way. Right. You can pre-qualify them in other ways, but that's, that's one of the ways of getting someone to pay and value for sure your design. yeah i think i think uh i'll go ahead and tell a, a a little bit of a it's not a worst case scenario story but it's a story of of filtering out a client that we probably didn't want and that is a uh, a church came to us uh they had just bought a new building or it was already 
it was, a, it was a new building for them. It was an old building they bought that already had some tech in it, uh, um, that already had some good that they were going to be able to use. And they, they sent me a bunch of photos. I never went to the site uh, because we never made it through that filtering process. But they sent me a bunch of photos, some floor plans, and I was... Uh, then uh, that was enough for me to give them a proposal. We had a good phone conversation, but then I gave them a proposal. They even had a, a budget. They said, we've got $135,000 to spend. And it was just audio and video. Lighting was all going to be, it was all good. It was all going to be reused. And even some of the audio was going to be reused. So it was a, a decent budget for this size of a, of a church. And uh, so I was, okay, this will be a good project. I'm like, but I, I can't bid this for you until we design up something to bid. And uh, he's like, oh, I don't understand. What do you mean? And I gave him the architect example. I gave him a lot of other examples. He's okay. I, I totally get that. Uh, so he got it, and he, he asked for that proposal, which then was uh, was ten thousand dollars. And so it was less than ten percent of the of the project. And he knew he'd get back seventy five percent if he went with us. Um, but he's like, I'll take it to the board. And I mean, that board just laughed at that proposal. You know, they, they, and he he did tell me this because it went it went one more conversation. Uh, he did come back and, and uh, um, I lost my train of thought. Uh, he came back saying, uh, um, yeah, I'm not sure they're going to do that. They don't understand it because there's five people behind you that are happy to give us their bids. And, uh, and I'm, going, I'm thinking to myself, A, you told me you came to me because you love my work and you really want me to do it. And now you're telling me there's five people behind you that have already given you bids. And, uh, and so, uh, so then well, what was the conversation with those five other companies? We really love your work. Yeah, exactly. would right. You, right. Would yeah, you? exactly. It could and be exact same, such a, yeah, yeah, hot air. Uh, and it, maybe it's not me. Yeah. I, and I honestly think this is true. I honestly think that people have been trained by salespeople, by us yeah. to, to not tell the truth. Yeah. They don't want to hurt our feelings yeah. or they want us to. They want to just give us enough information so we give them what they want. Right. And I think if we step back and actually had an honest conversation to say, what does this process look like? Yeah. Going back to last month's webcast, yeah. knowing all of those details, knowing right. process, are they going to go out and bid this out to other people? Right. What is their timing? Who's actually making the decision? Is it a committee? Is it a board? Yeah. Or is it an individual? Who right. are we? Who do we have to sell this to? Right. And so if you're sure. going back there and you're selling it to this guy and he says, yeah, I totally get it. Wait a minute. I got to go take this back to the yeah. board. Right. We should be having the conversation with him and the board. Otherwise, well, exactly right. Otherwise, exactly we don't right. have the opportunity to sell who we are and what we're providing right. that's unique. Because all the board's hearing is there's this guy that needs you to give him $10,000. I'm like, well, screw that guy, you know, because we don't get to talk to that board. Now, had we gone able to do that or had I been like we talked about, more desperate or more passionate about this particular project, I could Hopefully have, those are on opposite ends of the spectrum, not, like, yeah, not the same thing. Sure, yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. But but had I gone out there, I very well may have won it. I don't know that I won it, but I'd have met him. I'd have made a connection. I'd have probably uh, then, through me putting a full design together, giving him the full price, it probably would have been right in the middle of the spectrum of everybody else. I'd have probably then got a meeting with the board, and I could have won that project. But I, I didn't. It smelled too bad for me when he came back and said, well, the board didn't, you know, doesn't understand that. And I got five other people giving me prices. I just said, well, then I need to step away as fast as I can. What I did say is in the email, well, my price is $135,000. You can turn that into the board. and uh, Which was their project which was, budget. Which right? was their budget. So, so you, I knew I'm at least going to be right in there. And if they want to give it to me, they <laughs> so can. The, so they're saying, if you're evaluating me on expertise alone, how much do you value right, me? Exactly, exactly. Which I'm assuming they didn't call you back. Which they didn't call me back. So I lost that one. But, you know, and, and you can't say, well, then fine. That's one you would want to lose. Because it could have been a great project. Sure. And they're growing church. They may have given me millions of dollars worth of work out. After, just like some of my other clients. But that was my decision to make. My company had grown. We're, we're, we're busier. We didn't need to run down that road. Now, sure, if I'd have been even bigger, maybe I'd have a team of salespeople that, sure, drive out there, do all the whole thing. You know, well, let's just see where it goes. What you're, what you're, the idea is to increase closing rates right. without spinning up tons of extra free work. Right. So maybe going out there and meeting with them might have been a better optimization in the sales mm -hmm. process than charging for design. Yeah. So ideally, the, the design process or charging for design is a method of valuing, valuing your work and qualifying clients. Right. So if you can value your work and include the design fee, most people include their design fee at the end of the day anyway. Right. It's bundled they in somehow. That, they bundle it somehow, right. whether right. it's marking up all the equipment right. or... 
charging some sort of integration right. fee or whatever that piece is. You're, you're charging for it anyway. But like I said, I feel like we're starting to train our clients to, to not tell us the truth. Right. Because we don't tell them it's a design fee and we're marking it up in other areas, right. they're assuming that everybody else is doing the same. And so we're training them in the process. So if right. you want to get paid for design, don't train your clients yeah. to assume that it is included. Exactly. And change, change the process. Change the process, sure. And and I believe, like I told you, some 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 negative stories. Well, it's not a negative story. It's just one that we didn't win. But we're also we're spending all of that time we would have spent making money on projects that were paying us design fees and doing that. So really, it's still a good story. So you pre-qualified them out for a better client. Right. They could have been a good client, but you had better clients. That were willing to pay, that and were we did to those. pay and you moved right. on. So at the end of the day, we still netted closing a higher ratio. We lost one. We know we lost that one. Well, we didn't know that we would have won it. But we, we yep. caused us to lose it earlier than later, and and uh, and we went on to do much better work. Before you go on, that's such a beautiful point. Yeah. I think that most of us get stuck in this trap that says, if I put together the perfect proposal, I'll win it. Right. And if I don't put together a perfect proposal, or someone else is going to do this, yeah. that I'm going to lose. The reality is you never had that sale to begin right. with. Right, never had it. You never had yeah. it. And you may have wanted to have it. You may do amazing work and think that the quality of your work... The reality is the client doesn't have the ability to even look at the proposal and say, this is gloriously right. amazing. Right. They don't have that ability. Right. So they, you've got to win them in some other way. One yeah. of the ways, we actually charge a project onboarding road mapping fee. Hmm. We charge it. We realize that our, kill, our closing rate for projects is much higher because now they value the expertise that we bring right. to the table. Sure, sure. So if they're willing to... to to value our expertise and pay for it on the road mapping side, right. they're more than happy to pay for it on the development side. They're not right. going to be balking after they get the proposal saying, well, do we really need this? Right. No, you paid for it. We created alignment. We said, here's what you need. Right. You agreed to it. Now you're going to do it. Absolutely. And that's exactly what I felt in my company. And uh, and I'll, I'll express kind of more my strategy. Uh, let me express one other uh, user, as a, a Jetboat user in, in UK. Uh, so they've adapted a position of always requiring a new customer. So a previous customer, they'll do some design work for them for free. Uh, um, but a, a brand new customer, they'll, uh, they'll always require a design fee. But it doesn't have to be much. They express that it, it could be very moderate, you know. It, it could be that they're covering a few hours. So literally what could be a couple hundred pounds or a few hundred pounds or, or, or a thousand, whatever. But it doesn't have to be a big $2,500 or, 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 or pounds or euros or whatever currency we're working with around the world. It doesn't have to be $2,500, $10,000. It can be these small amounts, just enough so that someone you're feeling valued. Then you really understand the client, okay, they like my work. They're willing to, you know, to pay for this design. So they at least get something. It doesn't have to be a lot. And then they, uh, 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 they credit back 75 to 100% of that fee if the client uh, has them do the job. Uh, and that goes back to they're building in the design fee to the project anyway. So giving them all the design feedback doesn't matter. It's all there to give. Uh, so so um, because they're going to, you know, but the point is they, they, uh, they filter that client out. And once they have that fee, their closing rate from those customers shoots way up, just like you said. And I know that happened, that happened to me. So, so uh, when you use it for pre-qualifying, that's a beautiful example of it. So they're exclusively using it for pre-qualifying. Yeah, yeah. So as, as I understand, sure. Yeah, so is yeah. this going to be a great customer for us? And they're charging for design, so it's a win-win. Right. They got to charge for design, but the customer feels like, I've paid for it, and now I can get this back from right. a vendor. Who sure. probably is already taking their markup and pricing it in as well. Right. So now I can, I, it's a win-win for both sure. sides of that equation. It's, it's almost so like great. when you, you, you know, you, a plumber doesn't come to your house to fix a drain problem for free. He charges a $75 service call. That's just what it takes to get him there. Once you pay that, and now he tells you it's going to be $400 to fix it, minus the $75, you're not going to call someone else. You're going to go ahead and use that guy because you're already somehow embedded in, you Plumbers know. Plumbers make the most <laughs> Yeah, <ridiculous>. exactly. Sure. <laughs> well, they have us uh, They have us where they want us. But, uh, <laughs> if you need a plumber, you need a plumber. Yeah, exactly. But, mm -hmm. uh, but the point is, if they came for absolutely free, sure, I'm going to get another guy to come. Let's get five, let's get 20 guys to come, you know. But uh, 
so so now that's maybe a little bit of a scam the plumbers are operating. But the I don't point think it's is, a scam. it's them understanding but it's, value, it's, right? It's a value, exactly. They it's know a, if you don't understand the value that you're bringing to the relationship, you've already lost the sale. Right. How right. important is this to you? What problem are you trying to solve? How important sure. is that problem? to the person that's hiring you specifically. Yeah, right. and, and I think that's one of the biggest things that we miss in the, in the whole sales conversation yeah. is what value are we providing? Because the minute we begin commoditizing this problem, they should reverse engineer right. it. Right. We should have the conversation. If you're just looking for an equipment spec list of what to buy on Amazon, right. we'll provide it for you. Here's the fee for yeah. that. Sure, exactly. And you can make the decision if you want to do that or not. But if you don't understand the value that you're providing to the client, you have no ability to win this proposal. And if you do, right. it's sheer dumb luck. Right. Don't exactly. expect that to stick around. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I, and I think that's that's really, really, uh, really, really important to understand. And, and then build a... Figure out a way that works for your company in expressing that, you yeah. know, and and I think if you do a good job of expressing that when you're only at the phone call stage uh, or maybe you're at that consultation stage, if you do that for free, then, uh, you know, then they meet you, they trust you, they like you. And now you tell them now, if you like all that, let's value me. It's going to cost a little something for me to spin this up just like I did your architect. And then we're going to get you a design that can work really well. And you can have us bid on it. You can have four other people bid on it if you want, but they're bidding on this proper design. And, and whenever we would say that and really say that we don't mind you having other people bid on it, suddenly everybody feels way more easy. So, so yeah, I'll get to kind of my, my approach uh, that I adapted was, was uh, it was split into two fees but it was different than that retainer uh, fee from our San Diego user. It was basically a consultation fee and then the design fee. And so the consultation fee, it was similar though. That would have me come out to your location and I analyze everything, bigger projects, I'm taking actual readings because now I'm being paid. It's not, I'm not concerned with getting out of there and going to the next one. I'm being paid. I don't mind taking time. Uh, if they're paying you know, $500 to $2,000, uh, you know, $2,000, I'm willing to spend half a day out there with them. Remember, I got hold of some of that back because there's a report I got to write afterwards. Um, but uh, if they're paying a decent amount of money um, and, and a smaller amount of money, maybe for a small residential job or for a little bar and grill or something, but some amount of money for me to come out there and talk about their problems with them and visit them and, and then turn in a true findings report, you know, which if I am taking readings, like sometimes there's acoustical readings and there's, there's different things we'll take. Uh, if it's an existing system, I'll take uh, analyze the actual system if we're doing upgrades to it. And so, but I'm not rushing through this because I'm being paid for this. And so uh, once someone's paying me for that, and then that's something I'll give 75% credit back if we get a job. Well, then once we go through that, I turn in this findings report. Now they want this price for this big project. Then we also have a design fee. And, uh, and I'm not saying this is easy to get, uh, but out of the, the clients that had us uh, oh, historically, over the seven, eight years, we I I implemented that and the average fee being $2,000 for commercial projects uh, at scale, projects that are, you know, fifty dollars to $100,000 up um, where we would charge us $2,000. Clearly, we're not charging $2,000 if, if a client needs a new projector uh, for a consultation. But, but uh, out of those, um, those consultation fees, all but one uh, church wanted us having us d do that work. It okay. filtered out every single one but one of them and i know I, I went through this this last month because i was preparing for this study so i went through it with with, uh, with my uh, girl in the office all but one uh had us do the project and so uh and then of course we credited it back and that's fine and then they had you know then we come back in and we we get paid a fair amount for design and uh and then even then we say okay now we got to do a design it's going to cost x and then say but what you're going to get is a full set of drawings and, and, and a spec document that you can have anybody price. And so they will give you a price. You can have them give you a price. And then we're completely unbiased. We're completely fair. We know that we're pricing a system that we're going to be able to uh, uh, put through with excellence and maybe better than others because this is all native equipment to us. And you know, when you're bidding on other people's designs, you got to make some, some uh, 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 alternates and you got to change some things and you may not execute it quite as well as the original designer. But, and so I think some of that helped us win most of those projects because other people would bid on them and they'd be a little shakier, they'd be more money, they'd be offering all these alternates. 
and we wind up winning those projects uh, by a large degree as well. So point is, and that really worked well for us. I told you a story of when we didn't get it, and, uh, and that was fine because we got a lot of other good projects. Uh, but when we, when we would get it, we know we've got that client, and we didn't spend even a minute at that point. We've already got a check in the mail for the consultation, and we're making money before we ever even saw the building. Um, uh, That's great. So I will say uh, um, another user, it's in, they're in New York, so they've struggled with this for years. Uh, any attempt we've ever made to charge for design has failed because there's, oh wait, I already said this one, didn't I? <laughs> we already said this one, That's right. uh, which is the one I didn't say then. It was, oh, this other one, I'm so sorry. Uh, this guy's in New Jersey. At the time uh, I, I, I talked to this guy, he said he just had lost a job because they wouldn't include the design and bill materials with their proposal. So this is a new topic. This company is willing to do the design because they know they need to to bid the project, but they're not willing to give it to the client. And I respect that because they don't want it re reverse engineered. Um, so they did the, 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 the design, they did the quote, they did everything, but they submitted uh, a lump price, a bulk price with no line item breakdown of items and, and no design documents of any kind, no, no uh, you know, schematics, no, no uh, spec, uh, uh, even descriptions, nothing that can re reverse engineer that project. And the, the, the client wasn't even willing to, if, to put it in the, the pool or the, you know, the, the consideration for bid because they weren't willing to give them that. And uh, uh, I love that that company has a lie in the sand though, because I guarantee you the guy in New Jersey, he then now, while he did spend the time to, 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 to do that, he at least made, made a line of sand that I'm not going to give it to you though. You know, I did it for you. I gave you a good price, but I'm not going to just start giving it to you and, and, uh, uh, and give you enough to reverse engineer it because he smelled it was just going to be abused. Well, I, um, let's, let's land the plane because we're getting... Sure. Uh, I, I love that story and yet at the same time it reveals kind of the problem with with the industry the treating, <laughs> with with any kind of relationship and sure. it's not just the industry right. is there's a fair amount of um, work that has to go into explaining the solution that you're going to provide yeah. if they just trusted us explicitly they said I know you you do great work what's the check amount right. you're still gonna have to go back and figure out what that check amount is right um, you know and I, there are plenty of examples good or bad on either side of that relationship the client needs to understand what you're providing them so that they can trust what you're saying. Yeah. So you've got to balance that little dance there appropriately. Yeah. There's a lot sure. of tricks we can use in that process. The crediting the design fee back in the proposal right. where you've already charged for design is a psychological trick sure. to get them to understand, no, this costs us money. It's going to cost you money. You're, you're paying us for our expertise. Right. right. So that's a psychological trick we use to do that. Not including all the technical side, the assumption is if you had done the sales part right, that you would have addressed every single one of their pain problems and yeah. spec how you're going to solve that. And maybe you don't need to spec that all out in technical requirements that mm -hmm. they can reverse engineer. Maybe it's specifically saying we're going to put in this. We're going to yeah. put in a line array system that has an even coverage pattern. Yeah. We have these equipment. Like you can special, you can say what how you're going to solve those pain problems that you addressed in the sales cycle, mm -hmm. but what you don't want to do is you don't want to put together a proposal you don't know is going to get received or not. Right. If you are doing the sales process right, by the time you get to the proposal process, it's a done deal. Yeah. And I think right. most of us don't do that. We walk yeah. into this and we're so eager to give away all this free work and so eager to spend yeah. countless hours putting together proposals, and then we're nervously biting our nails and waiting, yeah. and we get free access to their voice mailbox for the rest right. of eternity, exactly. but that's not the goal. Right. Right. And so being able to walk through in the sales process to say, let's, if I do X, Y, and Z, if I do the design engineering and I get you a price that's put together for this, mm -hmm. is this a done deal? Right. And, and I don't want to spend 20 hours reverse engineering this process if you have no intention of signing this. Right. Are you looking to get three bids? Are you looking to get a design process? Right. And if you leave it up to their process... And if you say, what's your process on this, then guess what? You have to follow their process to get the job. Right. If you take a step back and you say, here is my process, yeah. then they get the decision whether they want to work with you or not based upon your process. Yeah. And that, and I, in, in hearing all of these things through, it's becoming painfully clear to me on what we as an industry need to do to, to get out of this. Right. It's we need to know what our process is to make value. I love your consulting arrangement of how to step right. in and say, 
how do I address what the actual problem is? Because the client doesn't know enough to define it 99% right. of the time. Right. What am I re- what do, how do I actually solve this from their perspective? How do I put together a proposal that has value to them? Yeah. And then how do they pay for it? Right. So let me, let me land a plane here and sure. just summarize a lot of the main points that we said. Yeah. Because I think what, there's, there's been a lot of gold nuggets here. Right. And they may not all work for you. You may want to implement two or three of these, or you may want to experiment with this on your next proposal yeah. that you smell a little bit of fishiness right, with. Right. Uh, because I, I don't think just making a hard line in the sand works ever. Right. Sure. <laughs> You're always going to bend the rules a little yeah. bit for each particular need or application, sure. even for your own process. You may not have time to draw, draw a clear line in the sand for yourself. Right. And so you've got to figure it out. How full is my pipeline? How desperate am I? How much... And the, the fuller your pipeline, the more opportunities that are happening, the busier you are, the harder of a line you're willing to draw. Right. Because, and it's probably going to yield in better clients. It's always yeah. amazing to me that really successful companies get great clients because they're willing to make those hard line decisions. Right. Yeah. People respect that. They right. value your I expertise agree. then. Yeah. So not designing for free. You have two options. You can choose to charge for your uh, designs for one of two reasons. A, to value your expertise and have an additional revenue stream. And in, as part of that, you're doing it anyway, potentially. So you're, you're baking it into your process. Yeah. You're upselling other stuff. So just be a little bit more honest. If you're looking to do this, then roll, take those fees out and put them into a separate line item and charge for expertise. You might surprise yourself if you count it as, a, as an income category in your, in your accounting system. You're probably going to be able to grow that income category if you yeah. just qualified it that way. Right. The other process of charging for design is it could be used as a method for pre-qualifying good clients. Yeah. So if you charge a fee for that up front, you're going to weed out the people that don't have honest intentions anyway. Right. And so you're able to pre-qualify. My second favorite answer in sales is no. Yeah. And I tell that to clients all the time. <laughs> like, don't feel bad. You're not going to hurt my feelings. We're going to talk a lot right now. We're going to figure out what your problem is. But out of this conversation, what I hope to have is one of two answers, yes or no. No is my second favorite answer. (laughs) What I don't want to have happen is I'm going to go back to my office and I'm going to spend 30 hours and I'm going to put together this proposal and then you disappear. Like that, I don't want any way, shape, or form. So if this isn't a clear yes, let's make it a no. And that's okay. I'm happy with that answer. Right, Most of the time, most of the time, we're not willing to walk away from that. Right. And so because of that, we shy away from it and we leave that dance open to that client. Right. And I think that's, if, if some of us were willing to take that approach, we would be a lot happier. Our clients would be far more endeared to us right. and would be willing to say yes or no. And right. I bet you more often than not, the answer would be yes. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're exactly right. If we aren't, if we don't act like car sales salespeople in the beginning, we're not going to be treated like them after we after we help educate our clients. And as I think that's the problem. We will always want there to be some chance they're going to come back around and we're going to get that project. But, but, but uh, yeah, I think really educating our clients, which of course, on the small level, on the immediate level, we're doing it client by client. And, and we become known for that among our group of clients as they refer us to other clients. But if we all do something like that, then we do shift. We have a chance of shifting the industry to where now it becomes like that. Uh, I mean, it, we, we change the pattern, the buying pattern. So I believe the buying pattern could be changed. You know, the buying pattern. I th- so I don't know if it can. And the way, the reason I say that is, you're always going to have people that are looking to break into a market, and they're always going to be willing to overcommit and overdeliver. And one of the pieces in in that is. If you're, if you're afraid of this conversation or you've run into this before, is ask any of your clients, have you ever done this work before? Yeah. Have you ever installed a big integrated right. system before? How did that process go? And the first two things I do is, and I'm sure your process finished on time, right? They said it was going to be done by March 5th. It was installed right. and ready to go on March 5th. Yeah. And they always look at you and they, and they always laugh, Yeah. right? They always, and then the next question, was it done on, like, what was your budget? Did it fall into that budget? Right. If you are doing this blind, you're putting together a bunch of papers, there's, I mean, the chances are infinitesimal yeah. that the projects get done on time and on budget because what you're, you're not able to anticipate all of their needs. You either just slap in what you said and it meets 80% yeah. of their needs, but that 20% may or may not be a deal breaker. It might be critical. Right. But the other part of that is you, if you're being paid for the design as you were describing mm-hmm. it, 
you spend a lot of time mapping out what they need. And they right. may come to you and say, we have a $50,000 budget. And you say, that's fine, but you have a $75,000 problem. Yeah. So are you okay with leaving a, you know, a third of this on the table for a future phase, or do you want to do it now because it's critical? Right. If you spend the time to do that, and you're not just rushing through to play a numbers game, yeah. you're actually serving your clients better. They're going to be happier. You're going to be happier. The next time you walk through this process, yeah. Everyone is going to, it's going to be a much smoother process. Yeah, so, sure, and, sure. And, I, and as much as I would love for everybody to get on board and change the industry, I don't know if that's a realistic goal. As much as it is for people that are, want to build successful companies, you're going to do it by defining your own sales process and building your reputation for excellence, for expertise. Mm -hmm. And over time, that's going to propel you to a far faster rate of growth than the people that are willing to just sure. give away the moon. Okay, I do agree with that. I do agree with that. Although I still hold out hope that we could change the buying habits of the industry. <laughs> maybe for the Jet Belt yeah. community. That would probably, be awesome. Yeah, maybe within the Jet Belt community. I mean, in the way that you know, Tesla is changing the way you buy a car. There's no dealer. There's no haggling. There's no negotiating. And it's working. And, and though, you know, Uber is changing the way you hire a taxi. And there's no tipping. And there's no this. And, and it's clean. I think that it possibly can be changed even with these newcomers wanting to come in and give away too much for free if 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 the community becomes trained if the consumers become trained just enough to understand the value they it's possible they can disregard that which is it's possible which is awesome if, I, if i'm an optimist i love the yeah. jet built community because mm -hmm. we get to have these conversations and grow together yeah. and I, my my bet is is that if you actually valued your design that very quickly and you begin to charge for it your closing rate is going to increase exponentially rather than decrease. Yeah. You're going to lose a few clients as you begin to pre-qualify them and mm -hmm. say they're a clear no. Right. But getting to know fast is far better than far getting better. a million people that say maybe. Right, exactly. Let me leave you with this other, this last thought and then you can close it up. Uh, it's one of the little ta small tactics because I know a lot of you really were asking for, don't give me talk, give me like actual things to, to try. So here's another thing that I learned and, and, and I will say this, some of you have been uh, uh, installing AV systems for a week. Some of you have been installing AV systems for 40 years, and I get that. Uh, a lot of you, like with the last webcast, you had a lot of great feed feedback. There's one user, uh, an old timer that has just sold big systems, and he loved some of the things that we talked about in that. So I love the fact that we're able to, in these podcasts, uh, explore possibilities that can help users young and old alike in terms of experience. But I will say this example came only from experience that some that are integrating less time wouldn't have. And so this example that I came into a church that had just put in two months before this, uh, it, was a, it was a JBL system and it was a great JBL system for the right venue, uh, high quality. It was the wrong JBL system for this venue. Uh, so it was a 500, 600 seat church and these two tiny little JBL uh, vertical, uh, uh, um, uh, these little vertical column arrays, and uh, uh, far left and right with a bunch of little four inch speakers. Again, right for the right application, wrong for this application, where they're playing big rock and roll worship music. And this sobel for that's like as big as this laptop screen, um, <laughs> and uh, trying to pump out big rock and roll, right? Right system, wrong application. Bad and design. Bad design, bad design. And this church didn't pay for design. They instead had put out, this is before I met them, put out, let's get some bids on up. And JBL is a system. good, reputable name. JBL's, so they got this this bid. Oh, here's the bid $20,000. JBL, uh, and the other ones are 30 and 40, whatever. I don't know. They went with it. And, and so two months later, they're trying to get answers. Why does it sound bad? Why does it sound bad? Why does it sound bad? Now they're probably bashing JBL on Yelp or who knows what, when JBL wasn't the problem. It was the design that's the problem. And, and uh, so then they, they, they'd been referred to me. They had to pay a, a, a consultation. I go to their place. And, uh, and through them paying for my opinion, uh, I, I then was able to tell them what's good about the speakers, wrong about the design. And those speakers, no matter how we spin them up, we can't remodel uh, it to work. We've got to sell those on eBay or to some other church that can use them for the right application and, uh, and put in the right system. So they'd spent the 20000 or whatever it was on the first system. They spent $2,000 on a consultation, and now they had to get another design for a system that was going to cost us another $20,000. Uh, that same $20,000 could have been spent one time, but they spent $40,000 to get a $20,000 system. And so that isn't a point to this story. The point is now 
or later, I don't do this any longer than I do jet built, <laughs> but later I was able to use that story. I was able to tell that story. Sure. Do you want to design this once or do you want to design this another time and another time and potentially another time? You've got to find the right design. Don't worry about your bids and get a high bid, low bid. Let's get a design. And uh, that church learned the lesson. The crazy thing about that church is they've referred me to just a dozen. Uh, okay, I'm not counting. So, and, and Paul's a numbers guy. He's going to say, no, tell me the number. Show me your CRM. Show me your, exactly. But I know it's at least a dozen. Because uh, I know the clients. I know those projects. And they all came from that. And they're referring me to other clients, of course. So, so this is powerful stuff. If you can express that value, tell that story as if it happened to you. Uh, you know, you, you, you know. This, this. And the funny thing is about that story: the clients themselves have walked already through this. They've, right. They've done it wrong. They've, yeah. That's that's why we're. That's why you guys are all at the table yeah. again. Right. They've done it wrong. They've already walked through a process. Right. They've either had a bad bad vendor relationship. If they didn't, they wouldn't be talking to you. Right. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So take that opportunity. To, to take them one step further and value your design uh, before you spin up that proposal. So, uh, and again, just to summarize, we're talking about the design that is needed to do a proposal. We're not talking about a full set of drawings. We get that. But when you're designing up something that has 10 items in it, you had to design to get there. That's all we're talking about. How long did it take you to, to engineer that much of it uh, to, to get those 10 items or 1,000 items? You had to design something and that's well, what we don't want to give for free. Well, it, it, don't, yeah, sure. Don't, any kind of free work is any kind of free minimize work. any kind of free work. Yeah, is, is I guess the point. Right. And most cu most customers are looking for an easier way to get into it without writing this monster check. Right. right. So you're doing you're pro you're actually doing them a huge favor in that process, and you can put it into this perspective that what we want to do is start with a small engagement, mm -hmm. so that you know how we work. You learn value in the process. We deliver on exactly what we said we're going to deliver. And then at the end of the day, when we come to a bigger and bigger project, you have complete confidence and know right. that we can execute everything we say we're going to execute. Yeah. So let's start with something small and let's work into this. Maybe it's mapping out the design process, yeah. creating all the schematics that you need for engineering, doing whatever it needs to be. Maybe it's taking on a smaller room or whatever that piece is. Right. But let's do one and then let's do 50. Or yeah. let's do the monster. Right. And if you frame it in that perspective, they totally get it. Yeah. Absolutely. That's great. We're, we're out of time. We're out of time. Paul, thank you again. <laughs> well, this yeah. is always fun. Well, um, I love to talk. So Hopefully uh, you guys have a ton of questions. We'd love to hear them all. Uh, you can reach out to us on, on Twitter. You can reach out to us via email. Yes. Uh, it's hello at jetbuilt.com. Twitter handle is at, is at jetbuilt. Yep. Um, so we would love to hear from you. We'd love your feedback. And we're going to keep doing these. So if you have other topics you'd like to address, you can always email Paul or myself. Yep. Um, Paul or Paul. So Paul just, or Paul. It's easy. Just Paul at Jetbuilt. Yeah, that's right. right. Yeah. But we would love to hear from you and become more engaged. We uh, represent, obviously, Jetbuilt. Jetbuilt is a growing community of AV integrators that are trying to sell more faster. That's right. So these conversations are really relevant to us. Uh, if you haven't tried out our software, we have... Uh, a free trial you can engage with and yeah. begin to see how you can leverage all of these little pieces into closing more deals. Yep. So we'd love for deals. you to, to, to demo and check out who, what JetBelt's all about as well. Excellent. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Paul. you. All right. Let's talk to you guys next time. Signing off. <laughs>